Hello, uh, I am Professor Sunil Khare from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. Um, we are working on EPG Patsala program of UGC under which uh, we are covering the subject biochemistry. Uh, in the biochemistry, the, this paper which is being covered today uh, is structure and function of biomolecules part 2. This lecture in particular will take you to the world of DNA, the historical perspective, how we came to know that the DNA is the genetic material, old classical experiments which proved that this is in fact DNA which is responsible for the life and inheritance. So, it is going to be very interesting before we understand their structure and function. So, in today's lecture, we will explore the historical perspectives which led to the discovery of DNA or nucleic acid and proved that these are DNA which is genetic material. This will also involve looking into some of the classical historical experiments and also the gradual timelines for the discovery of DNA as a genetic material. This shows the concept map that will be followed in this lecture. We will first study briefly how the search for DNA or genetic material was initiated. Then we will look at some historical experiments that gave evidences that DNA is the genetic material. Finally, we will have a look at the timelines of the events that led to discovery of nucleic acids and further genetic research in the years ahead. In this context, we will see certain experiments like Griffith experiment, Avery McCall's experiment and Hersey's Chase experiment which were the key experiments to prove DNA as the genetic material. The history of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid or the genetic material originated with some basic and fundamental discoveries. Depiction of DNA dates back to 1869 with its initial finding by Frederick Mischer. On February 26, 1869, he shared the isolation of this mysterious substance now known as DNA with his uncle Wellem His, who was a renowned physician and professor of anatomy and physiology at University of Basel, he had discovered neuroblasts and coined the term dendrite. In this letter he wrote, in my experiments with low alkaline liquids, a precipitate formed in the solution after neutralization that could not be dissolved in water, acetic acid, highly diluted hydrochloric acid or in salt medium and therefore, do not belong to any known type of protein. This mysterious substance was later on coined as DNA. Here we see the pictures of Frederick Mischer and his uncle Wilhelm His. Mischer purported the isolation of a material in the nuclei of human white blood cells, which was weakly acidic in nature and whose function was not known. He named this material nuclein. In another few years with more research, Mischer was able to separate nuclein into protein and nucleic acid components. Further research in last half of the 20th century, the implication of nuclein as genetic material and function as the bearer of heredity characteristics was discovered. In year 1928, Frederick Griffith, who was a medical officer in British Ministry of Health, 
performed several experiments with different strains of Diplococcus pneumoniae, now known as Streptococcus pneumoniae. These strains were of two types, smooth the S and the rough the R. The smooth cells were found virulent that is infectious as it caused pneumonia in vertebrates, especially human and mice. Their virulence was mainly due to the polysaccharide capsules, which also led to the formation of smooth colonies on agar plate. In rough type, cells lacked polysaccharide capsules and were non-virulent, that means non-infectious. Due to absence of polysaccharide capsules, they showed dull or rough colonies on agar plate. Here you are seeing picture of Frederick Griffith, which is known for his historical experiment. Now question is, what is that historical experiment? The specific feature allows microbiologists to easily differentiate the virulent and non-virulent strains using simple microbiological culture techniques. Each strain of Diplococcus having several serotype like S1, S2, S3, R1, R2, R3, etc. The specificity of stereotype again depends on the detailed chemical structure of the polysaccharide capsule which can be identified through different immunological techniques. Here in the picture you can see R type and S type cells. The R type cells easily looking rough and the smooth type cells looking very smooth and with a polysaccharide cover. Griffith selected zero type S3 and R2 for his work which led to generation of new concept of genetic material. Griffith already knew the fact that pneumonia is only caused by living smooth cells. If the heat killed virulent bacteria will be injected in mice, there should ideally be no sign of infection as similar as the non-virulent live cells. Strategically, Griffith designed his experiments which is provided in the table. You can see that set 1 consists of live cells of virulent smooth 3 diplococcus. Set 2 has live cells of non-virulent rough diplococcus 2. Set 3 contains heat killed cell of virulent S3 and set 4 contains mixture of both heat killed cells of virulent S3 and non-virulent R2. Now this figure actually depicts the experiment in a very clear fashion. You can see the first panel where type S3 virulent strains are injected into the mice. The mice develops pneumonia and finally died. In the second panel you can see live cells of non-virulent R2 bacteria were injected into the mice. The mice did not develop any sign of illness and survived, thus confirming the nature of non-virulent strain. The heat killed cells of virulent S3 bacteria in panel 3 were also not able to develop pneumonia into mice and thus mice survived. He concluded that after heat treatment, the bacteria must be dead due to which no infection occurred. In the last panel you will see when Griffith injected a mixture of both heat killed virulent S3 cells and live cells of non-virulent R2 into the mice, the mice suffered from pneumonia and died. After dissection of mice, 
it was observed that mice blood cells were having both R2 and S3 strains. He concluded that in this case, some factors must have been passed from heat killed virulent S3 strain to the live non virulent R2 strains, which empowered them with the ability to produce polysaccharide capsule and making them virulent. Thus, Griffith hypothesized that the transforming factor was an S3 protein and call it transforming principle. Here we are going to discuss another historical experiment which further supported the Griffith's theory. After 16 years of Griffith's work in 1944, Ostwald Avery, Colin McLeod and Maclean McCarty reported that DNA of virulent S3 strain served as a genetic material and was responsible for the Griffith's results. They stated their work with large culture volume of virulent S3 strain. The cells were pelleted down by centrifugation and killed by heating at 65 degree. Further pellets were homogenized and the supernatant and extracted the detergent deoxycholate, after which they obtained a soluble filtrate having transformation capability. To remove the protein from soluble active filtrate, several rounds of chloroform extraction was done and subsequently to remove the polysaccharide, enzymatic digestion was also carried out. At the last, by ethanol precipitation, a fibrous mass was collected which had the ability to induce the transformation in non-virulent R2 strains. Then to study and solidify their findings, they planned to eliminate all the contaminants like protein, RNA, etc., which is present in the soluble active fraction. Though the experiment looks complicated, but pictorial depiction of this every McLeod and McCarty experiments may clarify how they concluded DNA as the genetic material. In their first experiment, soluble extracts were directly tested for transformation with live non-virulent R2 type strain and injected in the mice. It was observed that mice developed the infection and died. Both S3 and R2 type strains were found in the blood of mice. In the next experiment, to remove the protein, soluble extract was treated with proteases and further transformation assay was carried out along the non-virulent R2 type strain. As a result, it was observed that mice died due to pneumonia and both strains were present. Further, to remove the RNA, every McLeod and McCarty treated the soluble extract with RNAs. The mixture of RNAs treated extract and non-virulent R2 strain was injected in mice and it was found that mice developed the infection. Final inference came with the experiment where DNA digested enzyme DNAs was used to treat the soluble extract. The mixture of DNAs treated extract and R2 strains were injected and it was found that no transformation occurred in non-virulent R2 strain. So they emphasize that once transformation occurs, the polysaccharide capsules will be formed in successive generation. Therefore, the transformation is heritable. This confirmed the finding that DNA is the transforming factor and which acts as a hereditary genetic material. The last shot came with Herse Chase bacteriophage experiment and you can see the pictures of two great scientists. In support of DNA as a genetic material, they provided a good piece of evidence by the study on bacteriophage T2 and its target bacterium E. coli. 
This shows historical experiment of Hersey and Chase. They used a virus called bacteriophage T2. This bacteriophage T2 is simply referred as phage also. It is a kind of virus which contains DNA as core and is surrounded by the protein coat. The electron micrograph of T2 phage is shown in the figure you can see here that the head is containing DNA and other than that core and every other material is a protein sheath. Prior to understand this experiment, we should look into the life cycle of phase 2 in brief. This figure shows the life cycle of the phase. T2 phase first adsorbed on the bacterial cell surface and subsequently injected its chromosome inside the bacterial cell. Inside bacterial cell, degradation of the chromosome was initiated by phase using its enzyme. Following the infection step, the viral information commanders, the cellular machinery of the host and direct viral reproduction. Within a very short time, many new phase emerged from a single bacterial cell and the bacterial cell is lysed. It seemed that some molecular components of the phase, whether DNA or protein or both, enter inside the bacterial cell and directs the viral reproduction. As it is well known that DNA contains phosphorus and not the sulphur, whereas the proteins contain sulphur, Hersey and Chase strategically designed their experiments where they had used radioisotope P32 and S35 to label DNA and protein respectively. This was a key determining point in their experiment. They grew E. coli in two separate radioactive medium containing P32 and S35 and the phase were allowed to attack the radio labeled E. coli bacteria. This figure gives an idea about the experiment. As it is well known fact that DNA contains phosphorus and not sulphur, whereas protein contains sulphur. Hersey and Chase designed their experiment where they used radioisotope P32 and S35 to label DNA and protein respectively. The key determining point in this experiment was that they grew E. coli in two separate radioactive medium containing P32 and S35 and phase were allowed to attack the radio labeled E. coli. As a result, the progeny of phase were also become radio labeled. In some of the phages, progeny DNA gets labeled and some phages protein coat gets labeled with their respective radioisotopes. When these radio labeled phases were allowed to attack on general without radio labeled E. coli bacteria, the progeny showed a remarkable result in that the phases whose DNA was radioactivity labeled got radio labeled progeny, but the phages whose protein was labeled got a non radioactivity labeled progeny. This ultimately confirmed that none other than DNA serves as a genetic material. The timelines of DNA discovery has been grouped into several decades of research since its initial discovery in 80s. As we see in the table, search for genetic material began with the work of Mendel and Haeckel till genetic material was isolated for the first time by Mischer in 1869. This was first reported in a publication in 1871 the isolated material was designated as nuclein. Research gained momentum post this discovery 
and Richard Altman renamed nucleine as nucleic acid in 1889. From 19th century to 1930, a lot of scientific advances were noted. Chromosome theory was proposed by Walter Sutton in 1902 and the word gene was coined by William Johnson's in 1909. Transforming principles was given by the Frederick Griffith in 1928 and DNA component and bases were discovered by Levine in 1929. In 1941, Beadle and Tatum postulated the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis. William Astbury took the first picture of DNA through X-ray diffraction. A classical experiment by Avery McLeod and McCarty in 1944 established that the DNA and not the protein forms the basis of Griffith's transforming principle. The same year, Barbara McClintock introduced the concept of jumping genes. Later in 1950, Shargoff rule came into existence according to which bases in DNA are always present in fixed and equal ratios. DNA was confirmed to be genetic material following the Hersey and Chase experiment in 1952. In the following years, Franklin and Wilkins photographed DNA crystal using X-ray and shared this information with Watson and Crick, who hypothesized the double helical structure of DNA based on this information. Meselson and Stull gave the concept of semi-conservative replication in DNA in 1958. From 1961 to 1966, the genetic code was discovered by famous Indian biochemist Har Govind Khurana. He was part of the team which gave the genetic code. The first restriction enzyme was described in 1968 to 1970. From 1971 onward, a lot of scientific advancements took place. For example, the first animal gene was cloned in 1973. Sanger and his co-scientist developed method of DNA sequencing in 1977. In 1981, the transgenic mice was created. Gene bank data was made open to public and first recombinant drug came into market in 1982. The Carrie Mullis invented the PCR, the famous polymerase chain reaction, a method for DNA amplification in 1983. The sequencing of human, human genome was initiated in 1990. From 1991 onwards, a lot of complete genome sequencing was completed. Complete genome sequencing of first free living organism, Homophilus influenza, 1995, first eukaryotic organism, Saccharomyces cerevisiae in 1996, E. coli 1997, first roundworm C. elegans 1998, Mycobacterium tuberculosum 1998. First human chromosome number 22, 1999, first plant Arabidopsis and fruit fly Drosophila 2000 and human genome 2001. First mammalian model organism mouse was published in 2002. To summarize, there are three major takeaway from this lecture. These are the genetic material was discovered by the first time by Frederick Mescher in 1869. He termed the isolated material as nuclein. Many historical experiments like Griffith experiment, Avery McLeod and McCarty experiment, Hersey and Chase bacteriophage experiment gave evidences that DNA is indeed the genetic material. The timeline of events show how the discovery of genetic material has evolved gradually over the time and how advances in research have led to interesting scientific achievements. So this is very first lecture of this course wherein we see that 
DNA occupies the central place in the life. However, what we understand today came through large number of historical experiments and major contribution from dedicated scientists. In my opinion, we can look back at the Mendel's experiment wherein the genetic journey started. It was Mischer who first isolated a compound with non-functionality, not known functionality and called it nuclein. Furthermore, the Griffith said it is the transforming principles, but this was every McLeod and McCarty who proved it is the genetic material, the DNA. And DNA, what they did was they removed protein by proteases, RNA by RNases and carbohydrate by fractionation, only DNA is left which is causing the transformation in pneumococcus. So, they proved it. Further, it was supported by Hersey and Chase. These were the landmark experiments where the journey began. We know that DNA is the genetic material occupies the central theme of life. In this lecture, we have seen the timelines of DNA journey and some of the key events like isolation of nuclein, proving that DNA is the genetic material. Then the BDEMS totem theory of one gene, one factor, followed by Watson Craig double helical structure. The journey for DNA has been very long, starting from isolation of nuclein from mixture, proving that DNA is the genetic material by Griffith, McCarty, McLeod and Avery, Hersey and Chase. The Shargob's prediction of the DNA structures, composition. The Bedel totem theory of one gene, these are some of the landmarks which were further fueled by Franklin and Wilkinson's X ray, A structure of DNA by Watson and Crick, the central dogma by Crick, the genetic code by Hargovind Khurana, the DNA sequences by Sanger the recombinant DNA technology principles, the restriction enzymes, the discovery of PCR by Kareth Mulley and human genome project are some of the landmark discoveries in this area which led to what we know the possibility of synthetic life today.